I am pleased to welcome back Kevin Downs, the producer of American Underdog, which tells the inspiring true story of Kurt Warner. Now, uh, we actually spoke ahead of the December theatrical release, but due to uh, some technical glitches, that conversation got eaten by, <laughs> by the computer. Uh, so welcome. Welcome back for the first time. Um, and actually, this is this is fortuitous because American Underdog is now available on VOD and on February 22nd, it will be available on, on Blu-ray and DVD. So we've got a lot to talk about, but first of all, Kevin, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good to uh, see you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm glad we could uh, make this happen. Um, so I spoke with uh, co-directors John and Andrew Irwin a few months ago about another film you produced with them called The Jesus Music. And there's a real power in both films where faith is a through line to some com incredibly compelling stories about real people. Um, they're not overtly religious movies, but they don't shy away from religion either. Um, is there a line that you and the Irwins consciously uh, walk with these films to preach without being preachy? Well, first of all, you know, we look for stories that are compelling. I mean, I think everything, every movie that we create starts with a story. And, um, you know, it's got to be compelling. Like, uh, you know, I'm a avid movie goer. And oftentimes when you look at a story, I, I'll ask myself, would I want to sit through this in a movie theater? You know, or if it's in the home, you know, take an hour and a half, two hours of my time and actually watch this with my family. And if the answer is yes, uh, then we take it to the next level and we start to dig in, you know, uh, to other elements of the story and what makes it so compelling. Excellent. Um, so what was the, the draw to telling the Kurt Warner story? What was uh, compelling to you from a story idea that made you think, I want to see this on the big screen? Well, for Kurt, I mean, I, oh my goodness, I lived through his story and was such a fan of it as it happened. Uh, you know, I was, um, I'm still an Arizona Cardinal season ticket holder. So when he came to the Cardinals, it was like a dream come true for me. Um, but lived through it. I mean, you know, I remember remembering back, I think what one of the things that drew me to him was he was just so outspoken about his faith. And, um, you know, he really lived it. And he was he kind of represented the every man. It was somebody that, you know, that was kind of famous. He was an underdog, you could really root for him. And uh, uh, there was something that was just so relatable from the Midwest, um, you know, uh, that, that was relatable to me. And I think a lot of America can kind of relate to him and his journey of, of hardship and, you know, kind of going from uh, packing groceries at the high V to all of a sudden becoming the Super Bowl MVP, like who wouldn't want to have that story, you know, be a part of theirs. So um, then when the opportunity came along to tell it and, and we met Kurt and Brenda and there was just, there was a lot of cohesion and synergy there. We were like, okay, we got to do this. I mean, it was just undeniable. We had to do this. So I take it the image of him you had sort of as a, as a hero, as an icon, he was able to live up to that somehow when you actually got to meet him and work with him. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. I, yeah, I to, I've told him this story. I, it, it probably makes him uncomfortable, but, uh, <laughs> which, but uh, you know, for me, one of the fun things is just playing catch. You know, you get to play catch with one of your heroes. It's pretty cool. So we got to play catch a couple of times on set and that was a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, it was just a real thrill to tell their story. Their, their story is not just a football movie. Uh, it's not just about Kurt, but it's about Kurt and Brenda and their family and, and really how he fell in love not only with her but also her her kids and her son uh, Zach and how that relationship kind of blossomed and bloomed and um, there was so much to glean from it uh, that it was a story that just again was undeniable that we had to kind of uh, tell into a motion picture and, and put it out there. Now you've produced a number of movies but this was I believe the first one as with a lot of people that was produced and, and filmed during a pandemic so what were some of the unique challenges that you might have faced on this one that uh, that you didn't on previous movies and that, you know, maybe some lessons you learned going into the future? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely different. Um, putting a, Producing a movie uh, during a pandemic is just something that, you know, you never forget uh, because you're dealing with people's lives and, and their livelihood. And of course, people, uh, you know, they, they're not forced to be there. They're, they're there if they want to work. And but, you know, part of our job is to be able to create an environment that's totally safe so that they feel comfortable. Um, you know, we do mandatory testing three times a week and uh, go through this really uh, kind of rigorous protocol um, in order to, you know, keep everybody safe and, um, and isolated if there's, uh, you know, some positive tests and whatnot. But we were able to make it through American Underdog without a shutdown. That was incredible. 
Um, the weather bit us a couple of times, but it actually helped because we had a blizzard scene uh, in the movie. So we kind of utilized when the blizzard hit us <laughs> and shot some of that stuff without visual effects. And that was very helpful. Um, uh, got footage of a real tornado that kind of helped us. And, uh, you know, it was every movie is a unique experience. It's very different. And uh, uh, you never know kind of what's going to happen. But I think the, the, the essence is, can you pivot um, and how fast can your team pivot when the unexpected kind of comes your way? And uh, this one was was that and COVID kind of added a new element to that that we'd never experienced before. So uh, it was a lot of fun. But always remember it and, and a good story to boot. Now, speaking of that tornado, there's and I don't want to give too much away, but there is a scene in the movie involving the aftermath of a tornado and it looked spectacular. I mean, it did not look like CGI or, or green screen or anything like that. It looked like you actually were able to get into the aftermath of the tornado. How, how did you pull that off? Incredible CGI. It was just amazing. Uh, and no, it was, you know, it was real tornado footage. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, I mean, you know, we shot the movie in Oklahoma. And so our plan was, we thought, well, uh, you know, we were shooting at the beginning uh, when the movie wrapped, it was kind of the beginning of tornado season. And we thought we would be able to grab one. And it just so happened like about three weeks after we wrapped photography, a tornado hit, not in Oklahoma, but in Alabama. <laughs> and so uh, the Irwin brothers are from Alabama and actually it struck uh, their neighborhoods. It was just the most bizarre thing. And so um, uh, we just grabbed some cameras and, and went to a neighborhood that we knew and, and, and got the real footage, but it looks spectacular because it really was <laughs> spectacular and uh, nobody was hurt in the neighborhoods that we filmed in uh, thankfully but uh um uh yeah it's it's even the even the studio was like how'd you guys get that and it's it's one of those things where it's just like you just got to be ready when the elements kind of present themselves uh to be able to go out and get it sounds like a double miracle uh nobody getting hurt in a neighborhood tornado and also having that when you need to film a tornado scene for a movie <laughs> yeah yeah no really yeah you can't like exactly you can't plan for a tornado coverage so you just got to figure it out as it goes but uh but we certainly did and, and got stuff that we needed <laughs> um so my last my last question actually involves the the blu-ray that's coming out i understand that there is an audio commentary on there with you and the Irwin brothers so did you get any insights from sitting down with the movie outside the context of you know, conceptualizing it, filming it, and then later promoting it, just being able to enjoy it as a piece of entertainment. Uh, did you get any new perspective or did anything strike you while you were looking at it that way? And, and talking oh, yeah. About the I mean, through it? Yeah. I mean, whenever we do commentaries, it's actually a lot of fun. I mean, the three of us to sit down and some oftentimes it's the first time the three of us have watched the movie together in a way that's not uh, um, constructive, uh, you know, because the movie's done. Right. So we actually will sit there and we'll watch it as fans uh, for the first time and kind of just comment and recollect on certain things as certain scenes pop up. And uh, it's, 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 it's actually, a, it's an enjoyable experience. So I would certainly recommend if you want to catch some nuances or just to hear uh, uh, any of the three of us just kind of blab for an hour and a half to two hours <laughs> about how the movie was made and what are some of the pitfalls that we went through and uh, some of the successes and the joys? Um, check it out. Uh, it's definitely worth it. Awesome. Um, so I said that was my last question. I lied. Uh, what's what's next? What do you have on the docket? What, what's coming up? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're actually in pre-production uh, on a movie called Jesus Revolution. I'm um, going to get ready to shoot it here in, a, in about a month or two and uh, excited about it. We had it in prep uh, right before the pandemic. And of course, that shut it down. But it's um, it's it's based on kind of the Jesus movement that happened in the early '70s out of Southern California and Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie, their stories, um, and how uh, uh, the this this Jesus movement kind of caught fire and people were kind of turning away from drugs and and rock and roll and kind of that whole uh, movement and finding uh, Christ and love and everything that Jesus represents and uh, telling it, the story is just really compelling and. Um, getting ready to shoot it and it'll be out uh, sometime next year. Well, it sounds like an offshoot, like a dramatization of some of the themes from the Jesus music. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, there's some things that are some elements of uh, that are in Jesus music that were, um, you know, taken from the Jesus revolution. The script was already done when we did Jesus music. We kind of just were holding on to it. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's a story that I love, I'm loving kind of seeing the recreation of it come to life and 
and have these characters kind of come out. And there's a lot of pastors actually that really relate to it because um, they, they, their birth kind of happened during this Jesus revolution. And, and so we're hoping that it'll strike a chord with pastors and churches across America. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I hope to catch up with you when that is, is uh, ready to be seen. So congratulations. I just want to awesome. say American Underdog and the Jesus Music are two of my favorite films from 2021. Um, oh, cool. I appreciate what you and the Irwins have done. So thank you. Uh, thanks for taking some time to talk with me again. And uh, yeah, take care. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. See you later. All right. Bye.